SpaceX Starlink fixes the cable melting problem. Or have they? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're gonna be talking about Starlink today. A bunch of you have been asking me if there was a resolution to this cable melting problem. Well, I did a video a few weeks ago talking about how SpaceX Starlink's actual cable, their PoE, or their power over ethernet cable that goes over into the dish from the router is starting to melt. And there was a lot of speculation on Reddit as to what is going on. Is there a problem? Is there a defect? Is there a reason why this is happening? And what we've kind of figured out was it was happening to people that live in colder climates that have their heater on. Now, if you don't know, the unit has three different options. You can turn your heater on all the time, you can turn it off, or you can put it on auto. Well, the people that had their heater on on or auto were having this problem, and supposedly it is fixed. And that's where we're gonna get into today. But before we do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this video even a little bit, please consider throwing it a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed as of yet. And if you are, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, you guys have been asking me about this for a bit. And yes, YouTube gave us this button down here. If you click thank you, you could throw us a couple of bucks for doing what we do, or even better, don't even click it. Just become a member of the channel. That would be even better. I would love to have you. Also, if you're looking to secure your family or your business's internet, and you're looking for a VPN, a virtual private network, Pure VPN has given us a link that will provide you with about 80% or more off which is absolutely unbelievable. So for the cost of about a latte per month, you're going to get 256-bit encryption, also a static IP address, and even port forwarding if you need to use it. So down in the pinned comment below, as well as the description, you will find that link. Go check it out once again if you need a VPN. So let's get right into this. Now, in my last video, we talked about this, and a bunch of people over on Reddit were saying, you know, we don't know what is going on. Why is our cables melting? And they didn't know if it was the actual unit itself that was getting too hot and there was a problem with the router, was there a problem with the modem, was there a problem, where is the problem? According to a bunch of folks on a subreddit, they talked about just contacting Starlink and Starlink immediately saying, hey, no problem, we're gonna send you out new cables or new cables and a new router. And I thought that that was very strange. They just knew that there was a problem without having to do very much diagnostics, according to what people were saying. And speculating a little bit, I said, well, they probably know what the problem is. Now, we found out that, of course, anyone that has their heater on all the time or in auto mode in a very cold climate where it's on a lot is having this problem. Now, if you don't know it, Starlink will actually melt off ice and snow from its dish. I call him Mr. Bevel, which is really cool. Now, it doesn't have a heater inside or some kind of heat ring or something like that. What it does is it increases the watts or the amps or the load to the unit itself, which, of course, heats it up, right? That's how it does it. So what ends up happening is, is it's pushing more amps to the unit and by so doing, well, the cables are melting. So in my last video, I came up with two solutions that SpaceX could actually do and one that we could do ourselves. Now, the two that I said that I think SpaceX should really consider is number one, shipping out new cables, cables that are a thicker gauge, right? A heavier gauge cable. Why is that? Well, the heavier gauge cable is going to be able to support more load more watts, more amps, pushing through that PoE or power over ethernet cable. 
this would be probably my number one choice because it would just solve the problem. Having a thicker cable will solve it because it will be able to handle the additional amps. Now remember, generation two of Starlink has a proprietary cable. So it's not like on the Gen 1s where you could just use any cable. You can't. So they are going to need to ship these cables out themselves. That's my solution, number one. And I think it's probably the best solution. Now, the second solution that I pose to SpaceX is, well, let's have your programmers write a little piece of script that will allow for duty cycling. What the hell is duty cycling? Well, if you duty cycle that heater and say, we want it on for five minutes, off for five minutes, on for five minutes, off for five minutes, or maybe something like on for 15 minutes, off for two minutes, whatever that amount is that will cool down the cable, that will stop it from melting, that should be the duty cycle, period. That shouldn't be anything that we need to change. That could be internal to the auto mode to the heater instead of the always on mode, right? I think that would definitely help. Now, once again, solution number one would be better by changing the cable and making it a thicker gauge cable. That, of course, would be the best solution. But the programmers could do this, and I think that this would help. Well, I want to thank Glenn. He is a friend of the show for quite some time. He wrote in and said, listen, there's something new in the app, and uh, it looks kind of like what we're talking about here. And sure damn enough, SpaceX Starlink put something in the app. Now, I looked at my app on the phone and I said, I don't see it here. I was looking, there's nothing there. I said, wait a second, let me go and update the app. So I updated the app and sure damn enough, it popped up. So I'm gonna show this to you. But before I do, I wanna say that if you're using the app that's built into the router by going to 192.168.100.1, well, you're not gonna find it there because I tested that too. I went to the app and then I went to settings and sure enough, where it should be or where it is now on the updated app on the phone, it is not here. Bear in mind, you cannot do this with the app on your computer. You need to use the one on your mobile device. When you pop into your app, it looks like this. Maybe I will throw it over here someplace. Anyways, it looks like this and you will see that it says online, Mine's called Bevel. Why? Because Mr. Bevel is what I call my dish. Or some people call it Mr. Dishy or Mr. Flatfit, whatever you want to call it. Mine is Mr. Bevel. So Mr. Bevel is online. If you go and click on settings, you don't have to go to advanced. You don't have to go anywhere. You just need to make sure that your app is current, like less than a week or so old. Go to your settings and then underneath advanced, you're going to see snow melt. Now there's three options. You have off, automatic, and preheat. Now off, it says never use extra power to melt snow. Automatic, it says automatically detect snow and heat up when needed. And then finally preheat, which says keep warm to better resist snow buildup. This option may increase power consumption. Why is that? Like I said before, it doesn't have an actual heater inside. What it's doing is it's increasing load. It's increasing the amount of watts that's being pushed to that dish, the amount of amps that are being pushed to that dish, hence heating up the unit. Now, right below this snow melting area, you're going to see something called sleep schedule. That is brand new. This is cool, but listen to the lingo here. Listen to what they say. Conserve power by scheduling your Starlink to sleep. Hmm. Starlink won't provide internet or melt snow while sleeping. Accumulated snow may take several hours to melt after Starlink wakes up and you may need to clear off snow to resume service. What they start out saying is that you're going to be able to conserve power. That's what this is all about. And then they go into a whole bunch of recital that talks about melting snow. So while yes, this is going to be about conserving power because when you put it to sleep, it's gonna be using next to no power, but that's not really the reason behind this. And as you can see, they keep saying snow, melting snow, can't melt snow, main melt snow, might not, and all snow, 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 right? So that's kind of what this is. This is all about that option that I was talking about, that duty cycling, but they really didn't do a duty cycle. They're making it so you're powering it off altogether, putting it to sleep, all right? 
Well, I want to talk about that a little bit more in just a second, but that's all we need to do here, just so that I can show you, is you click on Enable Schedule. And at this point, that's all you have to do is dial in exactly when you want your dish to sleep and when you want it to wake up and you hit save and that is it. Super, super simple. But the problem that I have with this is simply this. While yes, this will kind of mitigate the situation, based on you turning it off. And that is something that I said for everyone to do in my last video as my option until they fixed it on their side with either a thicker gauge cable or by doing some type of duty cycling. I said, listen, you need to turn this on and off yourself. Not the dish itself, but the heater. Put the heater on off and then stick it on auto or on on when you want to use it or when there is any type of accumulation or if you know that the temperatures are gonna go lower than 32 degrees or you're gonna get snow, sleet, whatever, then put it on. But if it's going to be a fair day of 40 degrees, 50 degrees, you know there's not gonna be any snow, leave it off, all right? That's what my recommendation was. But what they have done here is, is they've kind of put a Band-Aid on the problem by not duty cycling, all right, by making you turn the dish off altogether. And that's not necessarily what people want to do. I think it's great that they give you this ability by allowing you to put it into sleep mode when you're not going to be using it. So let's say if you are in an RV and you know you're not going to be on the internet from 12 midnight until six in the morning, well, turn the damn thing off. Now you could do that also with a timer, an electrical timer. And I think I've talked to you guys about this in the past. I think it's a really good thing to put a lot of appliances on electrical timers. And when you're not using them, just shut them off. Don't give your power and light company a ton of money that you don't need to. But in this situation, I think it's a Band-Aid because they are not doing like I was saying and put together some type of duty cycle where the unit can be on all the time. You can still use the internet, but only cycle the heater. So what I think that they should do, number one, change the damn cable. Their proprietary cables go up a gauge, all right? Make it a thicker gauge cable. That's it. If they're sending out, let's say, 20 gauge cables, send 18. If they're sending out 18, send 16 or 14 gauge cable. Make a thicker proprietary cable and send that out to everyone that has generation twos or anyone that has the problem because it's going to save you money in the long run because you're not gonna have to worry about the customers complaining and their cables melting. That would be option number one. Option number two is leave this sleep mode in there because I think that it is a good idea. All right, but also add a duty cycle on the heater unit itself. And that is it. It could be the exact same thing. You could have your little round wheel there and say, I want a duty cycle, you know, let's say 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off. Or SpaceX Starlink could simply test it themselves and see what duty cycle at the current gauge cable will allow the cable not to melt. That would be ideal, right? because now you're not putting it on the customer to try to figure out or follow a chart and kind of dial in, right? Just simply do it. This is not rocket science. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Sorry, Elon. It is not rocket science, right? To duty cycle this thing and have it turn on and off at a specific interval. That's my opinion, okay? Take it for what it's worth. If you do end up with this problem, okay? My recommendation is still simply this, turn it off. Turn your heater off and turn it on to auto or on to on only when you need it. Don't have it on all the damn time. It's going to end up being a problem. Now, some people have said that they've had no problems with it and they're in extremely cold weather. And I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe that is the case if it is so cold that even that extra amp load and heat buildup that is melting that snow off, the extra amp and watts going through the cable still does not hurt it because it is so damn cold. Whereas maybe people that are getting like cold spurts, right? And they leave this thing on all the time and then it goes from let's say 30 degrees then up to like 60 and then back down to 20, then up to 
40 and then back down to negative two, whatever the case is, but you keep getting those times where it is hotter, 60 plus degrees, who knows? You're gonna burn out that cable. That's my opinion, okay? So I would say still turn it on and off yourself. If you wanna do the sleep mode method, download the app. You cannot do it on the computer as of right now. Once again, going to 192.168.100.1, going into the Starlink app, it is not there as of yet. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it will be. But as of right now, you need to go through your phone. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this to be helpful. If you have, like I always say, please throw the video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Subscribe to the channel, click this little button over here, yada, 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 do all the things. If you like this content and you want more of it, you can go and check out my Starlink playlist. I have like 110, 120, I don't know, a lot of Starlink videos over there. Maybe I'll put a link over here. You'll find helpful how-tos and tips and tricks and what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And as I always say, the why. This channel is all about why, not just the how. The why is more important in my personal opinion. Anyways, guys, that's it. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.